Hi everyone, welcome to Coffee with Colleen. It's been a long time since I've been on here, so I'm excited to see who is going to join me today, um, other than our special guest, which I'm really excited about. We have Faith Blatchard, Blatchford coming in, a pastor's co coach, um, so she'll be joining me here in just a minute or so. Uh, I just want to say hi. I've missed all of you, whoever's watching, who's ever is going to watch. It's been a long um, time since I've been here. I've already said that, but i um, just excited. Hi, husband. He says I'm here. That's good. Hello, Charlisa. Oh, put some chapstick on. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of a, a weather, that kind of time of the year, chapstick. <laughs> well, cool. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and, um, yeah, just say... I'm looking forward to bringing some positive thoughts, some positives, um, some positive things on social media. I know that there's some things being thrown around, but I just wanted this time to be encouraging for you all and to get to hear from Faith because she has some amazing wisdom and I'm looking forward to asking her questions and just having her share about what she's doing these days. So, um, Faith, just a little bit about her. She is an author, she's a speaker, She's a composer, she's a creativity coach, which is incredible. First of all, the name is incredible. Second of all, who would not want a creativity coach? Sounds amazing. <laughs> and she's also a sleep consultant, which is also amazing. And um, she, her life's mission that she wants to do is to be a prophetic catalyst for cultural transformation. So that is her heart. For all, for everyone, for all of us, and she just finished um, not too long ago a book and a project called God of Wand Wonders, and I'm excited to hear more about that. I know she's been working on that for quite a while, and you can pre-order it the book right now on Amazon, which is amazing. I think oh, I don't have a link on yet, but after we do the interview, I'll make sure I put a link on so you can check out her book. So, hi, hi, Bridget. So fun, so fun. Okay, so Faith, are you there? Let me invite you. Let's just see here. Oh, there's the invite. Just invited her. This might take a moment. And then, we did this earlier, but let's see how long this... So yeah, so Faith, one thing I've known Faith for, man, I'll have to check with her, but I think about six years, um, maybe longer. I met her through Corey, my husband, um, their family is really good friends with Faith. And she, one of my favorite memories, there's many memories with Faith that I really enjoy. She's just such a positive person and I love that, obviously. I love positivity, but, oh, she's going to join. Yay. <laughs> I'll continue. So she, um, I remember Thanksgiving, she came for Thanksgiving one time and we sat at the table and she asked me about creativity and she just poured into my life and um, just love her heart for creative people. Her herself, obviously, you can tell she's super creative. Yay! Hello! Hello! Welcome to Coffee with Colleen! <laughs> oh, it's good to be here. Oh, <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm going to turn up my volume. Give me just a moment before we continue. It's on a stand, so I'm like, where is my volume? Yay! Okay, perfect. You're all the way up now. This is good because... Okay. Um, one, I have people on Instagram to my right here, and they'll be able to hear you now. And, and those of you who have okay. Facebook, you want to see her face, join on Facebook on my profile. It's Colleen J. DeSilva on my profile. But yeah, so, oh my goodness. Okay, so how are you doing, <laughs> first of all? I'm good. Are you, in, are you in Southern California? Yes, yes, down in Southern California. So, so you didn't you get are, anything. Are you in Red? Yes. No. No. Oh, snow wise is what you're talking about. No, yes. we, we've gotten a lot of rain and it actually, that's kind of rare for us too. <laughs> so, but yeah, the snow, tell me about the snow. It looked beautiful. That's it exciting. was a, one, a wonderland. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Did you drive in it at all? No. Okay, good. I just looked <laughs> yeah. at it. <laughs> good. No. Good. Just enjoying the view. Oh, Aww. is it can, still? Can you sweaty? hear me? So All right. I can hear you. It is delayed, so you'll probably hear what I'm hearing talking to you. Of maybe a few seconds later, I notice. 
so a little delayed. Okay. <laughs> so is it still snowing out? Like, is there still snow outside? There's snow, but it's, you know, it's been rained on, so it's slush and it's, you know, it's not pretty like it was. Oh, yeah. Well, at least you got it when it first landed and it's, it just looks beautiful. It's cool because yeah. it hasn't been very snowy in a lot of places. No. Really. So, and then Redding <laughs> got the snow. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, we'll go ahead and dive in. And I wanted to know if you picked out a mug, a coffee mug you wanted to share. I did. Yay. What is it? So it is, can you see? An yes, elephant it's... and dream. Because I have collected elephants all my life with the idea that maybe I could be in the Guinness Book of Records as the woman who had the most elephants. I so I have <laughs> thousands and I've quit buying them, but my friends buy them. And because we're talking about dreams, but I'm going to break with tradition because I brought two. Good. I love it. Oh, I love that. And in this day and time, we need to know that God's got it and got us. And so the interesting thing is this mug is bigger than this mug. And so God is bigger than my dreams. I love that. I love that so much. So for those of you on Instagram, she has a mug that's bigger than, um, and it says, I got this, God. And then the smaller mug says dreams. I love that. That's wonderful. I totally love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then my mug does not have any, is not as good as yours, but it's kind of a mug. I got a tumbler. Okay, I cheated. But oh, this okay. is what I chose. Because I just got this for Christmas, and I've wanted a little tumbler, cute little to-go cup for a while, and so uh -huh. I, I think it's pretty. <laughs> That's why. I yes, it <laughs> is. So mm -hmm. artistic. <laughs> and it has tea in it, not coffee. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Hey, well, fun. I love your mugs. I actually, my sister, she's brought I think two on one time. And then, actually, my brother-in-law, I think, showed three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, I'm not completely they, they breaking have... the rules. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, but John, my stepdad's on uh, Instagram, so hi, John. He says hello. <laughs> so... Faith, let's just dive in. I just want to know, I want you to share about your book that's coming out. Or is out. It's on pre-order now. It, yeah, it's on pre-order. It's picture. It's God of Wonders. I love So there's a story to it, just like there's a story to the winning the battle, the book on dreams and sleep. I love Christmas. And for years and years and years, I never took my Christmas tree down uh, because I love Christmas. And so I always buy something at Christmas that's, you know, a new ornament, a new plaque, a new something. So several years ago, I was at Michael's and looking, I mean, they have incredible Christmas stuff, you know, I mean, tons of stuff. And I saw this plaque and it said, fall on your knees. And I was just mm. gripped by it. I mean, it was like God showing up in Michael's as I'm looking at this sign and sort of on distressed wood, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't fancy or anything. So I thought, no, no hasty impulse buying, just go home, think about it. So I did, but I kept thinking about it. So I went back a few days later and that it was still there, which was unusual. So I bought it. And, uh, I just, there was something about it. And 
it took me into this place of the whole realm of awe and awe of God and being awestruck. So I put together a book, book, book proposal called Awestruck. And when I was meeting with the publishers who come out to Reading to meet with their authors once a year, and I pitched Awestruck to them and, uh, you know, there was not a real response to the book, but the one of the, the guy who was part of the team, he said, I see this as a devotional. And I'm thinking devotional, I don't, you know, I'm not a devotional writer. And I mean, he was, I could see him being impacted by God, by this whole topic of awe. And so his coworker was saying, oh, we, we don't want to publish devotionals. And so there was this negative, we don't want to publish. And he's off in the presence of God. And so I got a book contract and started writing. And the interesting thing is um, a pastor friend of mine was preaching about, I don't know, three months ago, two months ago, and he said, God is taking us into a new level of awe. He said, it's a season of upgrade of awe. And I thought, there's probably never been a time where we are more in need of awareness of the presence of God, of awe in the midst of all that's going on. And so God's timing, you know, sometimes we think, where is he? And is he on it and on my dreams and everything else? Because this book process started two years ago and it's only now coming out. Wow, two years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Well, it's so, perfect timing. I'm in awe. Yeah, that's amazing. And so, so then it was originally called Awestruck, and then you changed it to God of Wonders. For, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. 40, God of Wonders, 40 Days of Awe in the Presence of God. I love it. That's awesome. I'm really excited to read it. I'm excited for you, too. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll excited. Have to order it. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. That's amazing. So two years. It just shows you, like, you know, I feel like sometimes we get impatient and even in dreams or other things that we really desire that mm -hmm. God's laid on our hearts and we, we want to take control of it. But it's like, you know what, you just got to trust God. You just got to let go of controlling and just keep stewarding mm -hmm. what's in front of you. And that's just proof right there. Like the fact that you just kept stewarding it and kept believing for it. It now is coming out in the perfect time. And sometimes mm -hmm. we just don't true. So yeah it's amazing that's awesome mm -hmm. so i so okay winning the battle for the night um i love you know dreams you know this like dream interpretation i love like pursuit of dreams too right so since you mentioned that already and i think we're on the book subject we're on that kind of i want to want you to share you know how you came about writing that also like your heart for i love how you have like a heart for preparation for the night like how we prepare in the day um, just, mm -hmm. you can start wherever you feel led, but I just want you to share whatever's on your heart with your battle, you know, winning the battle for the night and all of that. Well, you know, have to show and tell. There it is. Uh, uh really your <laughs> mother-in-law, Donna Da Silva, uh, is very much part of the story of that book because, uh, she was working with Bethel Media to put together a series for Bethel TV uh, called Shifting Atmospheres. And, you know, now her book, Shifting Atmospheres and eCourse and everything is available. I, you've already, I think, interviewed her. But um, so we were co-workers and I guess traveling partners at the time. And so she said, <laughs> what do you want to teach on? What do you want to teach on this series on Bethel TV? And I said, well, I want to teach on shifting atmospheres through prophetic declarations. And she said, oh yeah, of course, because that's something I taught on. And she said, what else? And so we're standing there 
and nothing came to my mind except all of a sudden I heard the words drop into my head, shifting nightmares to dreams. And it came out of my mouth. Well, shifting nightmares to dreams, she said, great. And I think, yeah, but I don't have nightmares and I don't dream. And so, you know, the, but it was one of those moments when you think, okay, inspiration just dropped into my head because I didn't teach on that. I had no experience with it. And she was immediately, yeah, that's it. So fortunately, there was some time between that conversation and when we did the Shifting Atmospheres series. And in that period of time, I learned a lot about sleep. I learned a lot about dreams, nightmares, and I learned a lot about myself, which I think any project that we do in God, for God, with God, is going to be transformational first for me before it is for the people that are going to receive it. So anyway, I had mm -hmm. always wanted dreams and I own every book that you can imagine on dreams, dream interpretation. <laughs> I have those laminated cards, you know, that says, you know, falling out teeth means this and cars mean that. And, yeah, I have it all. And I did John Paul Jackson's course and I have dream journals and I had everything, but no dreams. And so, you know, after wow. a while you get frustrated. <laughs> and I had a close friend who dreamt all the time. And I mean, she to this day has, you know, a whole bookcase full of dream journals. And so one day we were talking because I was in this process and and she laughed. I, I said, I'm really jealous of you because you have all these dreams and I don't. And so here I'm bearing my soul. I'm being very vulnerable. And my good friend is laughing at me. And I said, <laughs> why are you laughing? And she looked at me and she said, Faith, you don't sleep enough to dream. And I realized in that moment that somehow sleep and dreams go together that you've <laughs> got to have sleep to have dreams and I had lived my life from probably you know I never took naps as a child which was a real problem for my mother because I was very active and uh, no naps for her she needed them and uh so I would always say that sleep was highly overrated. And I look down on people who needed, you know, I mean, if they needed eight hours, it's like, you know, that's just pathetic. And people who sleep, it's either babies or old people. And everybody else, you know, get a life and just don't sleep. Live and, and so sleep. I had so yeah. I do so many I so many ideas and projects so my life had to change uh, I was so convicted as I began to do research on why sleep I said God if I'm supposed to sleep you're gonna have to convince me that there's a reason that I'm supposed to sleep and science and research has proved over and over, more and more across the board, why sleep is a necessity for my mind, my emotions, my body. And God already had shown us for our spiritual connection to him. So it was transformational. Um, I used to have the TV on when I went to bed. And the thing that I, my go-to was the program Law and Order. And I would okay. watch it. I would watch even, you know, the reruns. And I'm sure God was sitting there in the bed with me thinking, Faith, honey, we've watched this, this one episode, you know, five times already in your lifetime. But uh, he is gracious and he waited until... I realized that going to sleep with law and order was not the highest 
plan, the best plan. Yeah. So wow. things change and setting a bedtime and making my bedroom not uh, my office, not my, you know, my bed was not my office. My, the TV was not my sleeping partner. Um, so, and it, it, a lot of changes and learning a lot in order to set mm -hmm. the stage. You know, I just, I had this picture of God in heaven seeing the, you know, night come and watching like on the edge of his porch and thinking, oh, in an hour, it's going to be night and I can go and hang out with faith. And he comes to spend the night with me and there's law and order. <laughs> or I'm not even Aww. in bed. I'm just doing my thing. And so it was, and also realizing that our day begins at night. And that's from Genesis where it said the evening mm. and the morning were the first day. And oh, if wow. we don't realize the night, eight hours is to be preparation for the day and it's preparation time that God has our undivided attention to equip us, to renew us mm. for the day. But a lot of people are afraid of the night and mm -hmm. it's a time of uh, trauma for some people. And mm -hmm. so we have to get past this idea that the devil or demons own the darkness because mm -hmm. they don't. God yeah. owns the darkness because he created it. And what you create, you own. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really good. I, I'll touch on that for you to kind of share some wisdom because um, I actually, I have, like you, so many projects that I'm like, one particular project I'm really working on, but I'm like excited about like, hi, Richard, Richard is saying hi. Um, and so I, I started to like, go to bed later, and then that would aff actually affect me. I actually sleep. I do best if I sleep at least at least 10 hours, honestly, I don't know why I'm in that season of like recovery and like re uh -huh. like, and I have tons of dreams. So it's like, to me, nighttime is that, you know, that recovery that God speaks to me. I spend a couple hours in the morning interpreting dreams spending time with God. And that's like been really fun for mm -hmm. me. And it's helped me with dreams and that sort of thing. But what I wanted to touch on is there has been some nights where that lie you know, and I've had breakthrough even just last night, but the lie of like, um, something's going to get me in the night because I started to m realize that when we sleep at night, like we're asleep and in the bed, mm -hmm. trusting everything around us to like not harm us or invade, you know, spiritually more so, but even like mm -hmm. living in the city, honestly. So it's like, I, I mm -hmm. had to deal with, um, that like false, like that fear, actually, and maybe it wasn't false, maybe it's, you know, but the thing is, God is bigger, and he would, you know, tell me, I'm protecting you, that sort of thing, but um, mm -hmm. I could see that pop up occasionally, like, trying to be like, um, you don't want to, almost like I, you know, start to fall asleep, and then be like, no, and then check my surroundings, mm -hmm. so it's like, that even itself could, you know, I don't know, I just felt like I should share that with you, because I feel like you probably have wisdom in that, you know, area, so that's all, I, I'll leave it for you, there you go. Because I'm sure other people have dealt with that, you know? So. Well, <clears throat> when I was doing the research to write Winning the Battle for the Night, <clears throat> I was looking for the scripture, Prince of Darkness, referring to the devil. Oh. And uh, uh -huh. I was sure it was in the Bible. And I couldn't find it anywhere in any concordance, in any version of the Bible, that phrase, Prince of Darkness, is not there. But pop culture has hijacked the, the night and has the whole um, pop culture of 
Satan and the prince of darkness and that the night belongs mm -hmm. to demons. And that's a hard thing to break when you've grown up with bands and movies and things, all of which are highlighting that we own the darkness. And so part of breaking that is just declaring the truth. God, you created the darkness and you own it. The other thing that is incredible, and I mean, I, I, I can't go into all the scriptures. I mean, <laughs> there's so many, but it talks in the scripture. God says, Solomon said, God dwells in the darkness. That's the scripture. Oh, wow. He dwells in it. Wow. And his <laughs> pavilion, he hides us in his pavilion. And there are treasures in his pavilion for us. The pavilion is in the darkness. I always thought his pavilion would you know, be full of light. Well, somehow it is and it isn't, but his pavilion. So then yeah. when you think of all these things in science, it's called dark matter and these uh, black holes in the universe and that our universe is just a tiny part of this whole dark black holes. I mean, is, is that God? Is that his you know, secret places, pavilion, I don't know, but he's in the darkness. <laughs> yeah. And once you think um, I'm going to bed to sleep with him, he's in the darkness and uh, it's life changing. And another, and this is a scripture, um, Psalm 139, where David is talking about all of God's thoughts. And he said, your thoughts are so wonderful for me. And he said, your thoughts are, I, I can't even number them. They outnumber the grains of sand, which that would be a lot of thoughts. And then the final phrase in that verse, and when I awake, you are still with me. Well, if God is still with him, it meant God was with him when he went to sleep. Because he's That's still true. with him when he wakes <laughs> yeah. up. So if we recognize that, we're going to bed in his pavilion with him to have him sing over us, dance over us, give us revelation, inventions, creations, um, and just tell us over and over and over and over and over and over and over how he loves us. Mm -hmm. He doesn't uh, sleep. He does all that while I'm <clears throat> asleep. Wow. He doesn't even doze. I, that's awesome. I love, I just love you saying God dwells in the darkness. I'm going to paint something and put it in my room, I think. <laughs> I really am. Because that. Great. So well, true. send me a picture. Send me a picture. I will. Of it. I will. I'll send you a picture. I think I'm going to put it right over our bed because we. I have this um, big wreath over our bed and it's got this empty space in it. And I'm like, I think I'll put it right there. <laughs> so that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I. Um, that's really encouraging to hear all that because that's another thing I noticed recently how I was watching this movie and it was an older movie that I think I watched when I was younger and I was watching mm -hmm. it and I was catching some things that I like lies, you know, that we, I've learned when I was a kid, which I had like breakthrough and I did like a Sozo with or whatever. And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh my gosh, that's where I learned that. I was like, even more like that also confirmed that, or, Oh my gosh, that's why culture believes that. And just like, um, realizing so much how like movies do affect us because mm -hmm. I mean, we get so engrossed in it. We become, you know a part of the main character we are a part of the movie we're the uh, we're the audience we're the camera that's us hanging out right. with them but mm -hmm. um just culturally like and then that makes me think about you know your age to come and how you want to influence um transform culture uh yeah mm -hmm. do you have any thoughts on that i'm just kind of going wherever the trail leads <laughs> Holy <Spirit> well, trail. <laughs> you know 
Uh, there's kind of two stories. I mean, one is the music and one is this whole idea of transforming culture. And the, the music is kind of a subset of transforming culture. Um, I'll tell you the transforming culture first and then the music. Uh, every fall I ask God for a scripture or a word, you know, for the coming year. And so one year he gave me a scripture from 2 Corinthians and it says, all things are yours, the world, the present, the future. And I thought, my gosh, that that's incredible. And I was traveling a lot around all over the world. And I love to travel. And I love <clears throat> beautiful restaurants up on a terrace overlooking a harbor or shops. And, and I thought this is going to be a year of travel and wonderful meals and shopping and all this stuff. And he let me enjoy that fantasy for a few days and then he said so if the world is yours and the present what are you going to do with it and i looked around and that this was probably i don't know seven years ago and things were not good then not as bad as they are now um and i said well i'm just one person you know i can't change the culture and he said, well, yes, you can, one person at a time. And so he gave me this teaching seminar called Unlocking Inspiration, Imagination, and Innovation. And the idea that every one of us is a creator with a little c. Not, I'm not just talking about art or music or writing. I'm talking about inventions and bringing the culture of heaven. You know, Solomon, when the queen of Sheba came to see him, her, she, her breath, she lost her breath, just seeing his table settings and the clothing of his servants. So it's fashion, it's how you create an atmosphere of peace and beauty in your home. So if mm -hmm. you, if everybody has this deposit of God in them, but for whatever reason, it has been blocked and locked, you know, just by, I, I mean, I always use the example of a child who wants a chemistry set for Christmas and they get the chemistry set and the parents say, don't use this if we're not at home. Well, you know, what does the child do? As soon as the parents leave, the kid hauls out the chemistry set in the kitchen, mixes <laughs> and blows up the kitchen. And the parents come home and say, don't you ever touch a chemistry set again. Well, maybe God intended for that little boy to become a chemist who would discover and create, invent a solution. But he was, through that trauma and the reaction of his parents, completely shut down that gift of innovation in his life. So to help people find where they've been blocked and to get unlocked and to get on a path for completing what God's put in them. So that is that's the creativity uh, mm. piece of it, that everybody has a role to play. And watching people in seminars who find, oh my gosh, you know, my teacher glared at me or a friend made fun of me or whatever. And <clears throat> for some people, like 50 years later, I mean, just incredible absolutely to watch and to see things happen as a result of it. Well, you know, my own journey of creativity, um, I was, uh, I started piano lessons when I was five and a half. And thank goodness for parents who, you know, say you are going to do this. Um, <laughs> when, I mean, I hated practicing and my 
piano teacher was the organist in church and she was a very scary lady. I mean, I can still <laughs> see her. Mrs. Gerwig, huge woman, gray hair and a bun, you know, just intimidating. And I had these blue sheets that I had to write down how many hours I practiced. And I always lied. I mean, what kid does it? And uh, yeah. so, I mean, maybe all kids don't, but I sure did. Not I, only that, I was a preacher's kid. My dad was the minister. And I, so I knew about prayer. And so I would pray that she'd get sick and, you know, for so I wouldn't have to have my lesson. And so somehow somebody found out and it was in the church bulletin that some little girl is praying for her piano teacher. But anyway, I just kept on and I found great joy in just playing extemporaneously. Mm. And uh, so years later, I mean, I was in worship bands and all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> but the joy mm. and the presence of God for me of just with God playing and so one day I was playing for some friends. It got very quiet in the room and I looked around and they had tears streaming down their face. And I thought, well, that's odd. You know, sometimes we don't connect uh, ourselves to what's happening. And so we ended and they <clears throat> said, you've got to make a CD. And I said, why? And well, that's just, you know, it's beautiful. I thought, I don't want to make a CD anyway. A few years later, I ended up being challenged again to create a CD, and so I did. And so, I don't know, seven CDs later, um, and some of the comments, you know, it. I can do notes, but I can't bring anointing and presence. You know, God has to rest on it. God has to breathe yeah. on it. it it's so when I give you testimonies, I'm not giving you a testimony about me because I can't do that. But mm. one um, lady was telling me, she has a, like a four-year-old. They were on a road trip, very uh, uh, active child. She had just bought one of the CDs and she put it in and she told the little boy, you're going to take a nap. And you know, I'm going to count to five and you better be asleep. So she puts the CD in and uh, it's quiet for just, a, you know, a minute or so. And all of a sudden this little boy pops up and he says, mommy, Jesus is on the music. And, you know, wow. out of the mouth of children. And another one, some adults had been here. They had been in the bookstore. They bought the CD and they were, it was the morning, you know, service. And I ran into them and they said, we'll be back tonight. We're going to go to the, you know, coast and come back. Well, they came back that night and they said, you need to put a warning on this CD not to listen while operating uh, high powered, oh, no. you know. <laughs> Whatever they said, they had the CD in and they had to pull over because the presence of God was so strong on it. Then, once again, you know, I can't do that. God just chooses to land on it. And uh, obviously, you know, not it, not it's not for everybody, but it's been something that has touched people. So, I put together ones that are geared towards sleep because that's such an issue of people not sleeping. So it's um, Good Night and Sweet Dreams. And then awesome. Good Night and Sweet Dreams has prayers on it as well, mm. which are, they're all available on my website. Um, so that's the creativity in my own life piece, which it wasn't my dream. Do you know? I mean, sometimes people have a dream to be going to be a Pulitzer Prize winning author. I mean, I didn't have those dreams. Well, I didn't have dreams. So I didn't have, but even personally. <laughs> and yeah. yet God's dream and intention for my life um, mm -hmm. has been the thing that has released creativity through me. Wow. That's amazing. And so when you were talking about before with the creativity coach or 
uh, unlocking blocks for people. That's your creativity coaching, correct? And right. how can people sign up for creativity coaching for that? For you, they can you? go to to my web to my website faithblatchford.com or email me at faithunlocksdreams at gmail.com. Uh, and then there's a place on it that says connect with faith. And you can pick what kind of uh, session you want, creativity. Um, actually, I think it's called Freedom Focus strategy maybe it does say creativity i just i can't remember that i should know my website better but <laughs> okay well what i can do i was going to put a link on but I'll, I'll do it after i'll put a link on the um like the comments and then later i'll because mm -hmm. i have your you gave me a, a picture with your website stuff too right do, yeah yeah that'll be good because mm -hmm. i mean that sounds incredible i know sometimes and when i do dreams coaching it will be like that kind of a dream, like a creativity dream. But um, mm -hmm. I love that you're specifically helping people with that because like you, I believe that we are, are all creators, little C, like you said, and in mm -hmm. any way, like whether it's, you know, cooking, cleaning, uh, starting a business, even finance, like doing cash finances, like God gives us strategies and um, we are created in his image so i think that's awesome that you yes. will unlock things that are blocking them from being their true who god's created them to be i think that's amazing and it's <clears throat> i mean the number of people who have been shut down at a it's usually at a very early age and when you think what if none of those people had ever been shut down if they had been able to release what God had put in them, how would the world be different? Mm, yeah. And so that goes back to the scripture. Uh, I've given you everything, the world, the present and the future. And someone, and I can't remember who the guy was that said it, but he said, the way to determine or know what the future is going to be is to create it. Wow. And so that really is true. Um, but if we're locked and that creative capacity and gift within us is shut down, uh, then the future is going to be determined by maybe ungodly people rather than God's people. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's, I love that too, because I know there's, um, there's two sides of like, you know, there's people who believe like you can create things, but it's like partnering with Holy Spirit to create these and partnering with him and, and stewarding. It's like a whole combination of things like with creativity, like you steward mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And then also, makes me think about um, positive speaking too, because uh, I heard you at the Sozo Summit and when you were talking about um, speaking positively, I don't remember it all. I just remember that really like stood out to me because I think I was going through a stage of, um, you know, thinking negatively about my future, honestly. And I could see mm -hmm. myself because of that, I was kind of walking through mud, like Ugh, just keep mm -hmm. moving forward what God is saying keep creating these things but it's like our thoughts and our words are involved with that what do you have to share about that I'd love for you to share what you talked about last in the summit I don't remember what I said uh I know that <laughs> I grew up <clears throat> excuse me in a very negative uh environment I mean my dad was brilliant and he was, he was probably prophetic too and didn't know it, but very, very negative. He would say that he was a realist, you know, that he wasn't an, a pessimist, but mm. looking at it through a different lens, I thought he was Mr. Pessimistic with a capital P. And so I just grew up with that. And I mean, the lens, everything I saw, it was through pessimism, negativity, and my mother was very critical. 
And so for me, it has been <clears throat> and still is a an ongoing journey and the scripture, you know, where God says, be careful, you're going to have to give an account of what you say. Um, and all the things on judgment and criticism, but I mean, truthfully, I'm still, I mean, I'm still there of something bad happens. And the first thing out of my mouth is negative, 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 pessimistic, pessimistic. And so I have to <clears throat> connect with God. And that's why that scripture, you know, of in Psalms 139, when David said, all your thoughts towards me and for good and so many they can't even be numbered that I have to intentionally connect with God when I say well this is what I think and then I say and what do you think and he'll answer mm. I mean he answers there's no hesitation and the good thing about when he answers is there's power it's not just like sometimes mm. we just talk with our friends and well, what do you think? And they say what they think. Well, it has no more power than what I say. And so we can get into mm -hmm. an argument, but I ask God, what do you think? And he tells me it has power. So that is, um, I, I'm not there yet, but I, I am further along than I was years ago. <laughs> Yeah. And it has, a, it changes things. I mean, mm -hmm. his word, and then when I agree with it, and I start mm -hmm. saying, okay, I agree with that. That's amen. You know, that's what amen is all about. So I'm trying to amen God a lot more than I used to. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Because after I saw that, you know, you're talking at the summit, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so positive. I never would have thought of I mean, my interactive actions with you have never been like the pessimistic or negative side. So I just, I think that's your true nature then. Like you are meant to be positive. So I think that you're meant to, to that's who you are. So, so I declare well, over that it'll be easy. That, that'll that come first. You know, the, uh, the fact that I'm named Faith, I mm -hmm. used to hate that. I wanted to change my name. It was like a constant accusation because, or feeling of failure because I was so uh, filled with so much unbelief and doubt. And then my name is Faith. And <laughs> it's like, but you know, it's shifting. I'm coming into who I am and my name is Faith. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I have some comments on Instagram. Um, hi, Georgie, first of all, or Leo. But um, Courtney, she says, wow, such a good point. She said that earlier. I don't know when she said it, but all of what you're saying is a good point. <laughs> we'll say. <laughs> and then my mom says, um, connecting with God is so important, but I believe inviting positive people are very helpful as well. Just really good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, yep. that's the Bible too. Don't hang out with, you know, naysayers or what I can't quote the scripture but yeah. it's in the bible somewhere yeah I was like naysayers <laughs> that's, I thought of that too uh -huh. um, that's awesome love that so let's see I want to go back we have about 10 minutes or so um I want to ask you one more question and then I want to give you time to say whatever you want to say do whatever you want to do um I I loved how you talked about you know your book is, talks about God told you to teach on turning nightmares into dreams. And so I kind of mm -hmm. wanted that. I had a couple people ask me questions about that. I wanted to hear what you have learned with that. Well, <clears throat> you know, still learning. Um, we're all in a journey. But I, yeah. I think <laughs> I have found through my own experience and just in talking with other people and consulting with other people is that really there are three voices or three sources when it comes to nighttime activity. One, of course, is God, the voice of God coming through dreams or night visions uh, or revelation. Um, that's, that's what we're all after. 
the second one is the demonic and we want to figure out how can we not have that kind of interaction and third is our own voice and uh yeah that's that would be the category i think of <clears throat> people call it different things soulish pizza dreams all those different things but those are the three main ones and part of determining what voice we're going to hear at night is determined by our activity during the day and realizing that when we go to bed that is the we're ending one day and starting a new day and we don't want to carry into the new day the things of the past and <clears throat> There's something that um, psychiatrists and research, they call it mind wandering. And they've determined that <clears throat> most people spend 30 to 50% of their waking hours mind wandering. <laughs> and the thing is, wandering really is something that has no direction, no destiny. We're just wandering around. Well, let's say COVID and this time that we're living in, everything is about COVID. Everything mm -hmm. is about COVID. Well, it's interesting that people, there's more research being done that during COVID, people have been dreaming. 87% of the people are saying they are dreaming like never before. The problem is, many of them are having weird dreams. And so a mm -hmm. uh, psychologist, renowned lady at Harvard has been doing research on dreams. She's not a believer, sleep and dreams. She's into some weird things, but she's a researcher. She wrote between March and June, she did studies on dreams related to COVID and has already published a book in June called Pandemic Dreams. Because people are having traumatic dreams, nightmares, just weird dreams, mm -hmm. which points to the fact that what happens during the day, our mind wandering, wherever it wanders, if it's being inundated and we wander here, it's all about COVID, we're going to mm -hmm. dream about COVID. Mm -hmm. And so dealing with, during the day, our fears, anxieties, problems related now it's about COVID, but whatever else it is, if we deal with it during the day, you know, this is like a mm -hmm. child. If you don't deal with what's bothering your child during the day, you will be up all night because they will be having nightmares. They'll be coming in your room. They'll be wanting, obsessing about it. And so deal with it during the day. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of that, which is related to it is Paul says in Ephesians, he said, don't go to bed angry. I was just thinking Be that. Yeah. Because you give a foothold to the devil. Yeah. You, you're yeah. sending up a searchlight. Here, come and spend the night with me. Because the word nightmare actually means night demon. So if you had a nightmare, it's come from a demon. And one way, not, it doesn't mean sometimes we have nightmares and it's not because I'm angry with someone, but check that first and mm -hmm. uh, learn. I mean, the night belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't want an invasion that is unnecessary. So yeah. forgive. And I call it brush and flush you're in the bathroom, you are in front of the mirror, you're brushing your teeth. And as you're there, you say, God, is there anybody I need to forgive? And he says, yourself, because that's who we usually need to forgive the most sometimes. Okay, God, I forgive myself. And to put the exclamation point, you flush the toilet, brush and flush, and it will make a difference uh, wow. in how you sleep. I love that. 
I love that. I So um, I'm going to say it again just to make sure everyone on Instagram heard. Um, to brush and flush, he's saying, like, just before you go to bed at night, asking Holy Spirit, asking Jesus, is there anyone I need to forgive? And she's saying how a lot of times it's, you know, yourself, which I totally agree. I forgive myself. And then flush that toilet as, like, a prophetic act as the exclamation mark. I love that. And I, um, I want to read a couple comments, too, that people comment on while you're talking and then um, also, yeah, I'll do that first. So my mom was sweet. She said, Colleen has been a positive role model as her mother. Um, I'd like to say Colleen is an inspiration to me and my family. Very much loved. She's really sweet. So she's talking about the positivity. And then she mentioned the dream stuff. Um, mm -hmm. God is awakening our souls to the false narratives that are being thrown at us. Um, believers will find peace, is what she said. And I think, uh, you know, that's the what I've learned with nightmares, like I, they're not from God, but God is also revealing to you, allowing the enemy to reveal to you the plans that he's doing. Like if you are dealing with fear in the day, your mind's wandering, mm -hmm. like you said, you have a nightmare about, um, I'll give an example, not full detail for me, but I had this nightmare that felt like a nightmare, but it also felt kind of like, kind of like a, it wasn't like a terror, you know, necessary. I had mm -hmm. a little bit of a terror. Um, and it's, it was, you know, dealing with a, a, a death in my family that I was grieving and, um, mm -hmm. woke up, I was so like frazzled by it. And it was interesting because I prayed and asked Holy Spirit, like, what do I need to do with it? And he literally, I pictured myself in the dream and, um, the situation I was trying to help this person that I, that has passed away in my life. And God told me, I want you to, he like grabbed my hand, Jesus did. And I saw myself walk and get back in the car and then drove off. And mm -hmm. in that moment, I realized, okay, first of all, that wasn't from you, that dream. And second of all, you're calling me to let go. And so mm -hmm. um, just that's some way I like to use dreams is kind of like, also like there's a, uh, Beth Childs talks about dream changing, that sort of thing. Um, have you mm -hmm. read her book, Beth Childs? I've, but anyways, so, but if you want to comment on even mom's comments, you know, with the narratives that are being thrown at us, maybe that's atmosphere stuff she's talking about, but what do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's part of this, the environment in which we're living. Uh, we're being bombarded uh, constantly. And so this is choosing what I'm going to focus on, listen to, and um, allow into my space. And mm -hmm. it's, it is, it, it's harder than it's ever been. Um, it's because it's constant and the volume has been turned up. So we have to be <clears throat> very intentional. And, you know, I think going back to what your comment about nightmares, you know, one thing that we can do if we have a nightmare is asking, being proactive and say, Jesus, would you go into that dream and resolve it? You know, bring your kingdom, bring your truth into the dream so that we're not left with the sort of bad taste in our mouth, that it's redeemed by, <clears throat> and we, we do this, in sozo during the day you know if we're talking to someone they've had some traumatic thing and so it's presenting jesus where was jesus well we can do the same thing with a nightmare jesus where are you in it's and it's fantasy it's not real but jesus isn't stopped by that so creatively jesus what would you have done and um <clears throat> which brings healing and peace to us uh, if we can't mm -hmm. just dismiss it. And sometimes people can't. We loop, you know, we get a nightmare. One other thing, talking to people, rehearsing all the details of a nightmare is not always helpful. It just digs a hole deeper in terms of its imprint in our spirit. Okay. That's good. So what, what should someone do? Like, so a practical thing is what you said when you wake up, invite Jesus to show you where he was in the dream and what he would like to do. Is there, I think that's yeah. a great. 
but do you have any other practical tools for people with nightmares? When I think to ask him, what, is there something in my life that that was um, unresolved? Did that come from somewhere? And is it something I need to deal with? And is there somebody I need to forgive? And allow it to be a source, a doorway back into my life and of healing of something mm -hmm. that um, maybe never got resolved. Yeah, that's good. I love that. Thank you for sharing all that. Do you have anything mm -hmm. else? I love that. No, I think, um, I think pressing into God is the key for all of us day and night. Yeah, I think He's so. He's the source. He's the source of the dreams. He's the source of the sleep. You know, his desire and gift and promise is for deep and sweet sleep. And that's what I pray for all of us to have. Deep mm -hmm. and sweet sleep that we go to bed hugging God and receive the dreams and inspiration and revelation uh, from him. Mm -hmm. And that to remind ourselves and remember that God dwells in the night. I just love that. Because when I picture God dwelling yes. in the night, it's like he, it's, it's that, I don't know, it's, um, it's a comfortable, he like is soaking in it. To him, it's not scary because it's his creation. I just, I love that. So right. like God dwells in the night. I might take, I might title the conversation, this chat <laughs> that too. <laughs> I love, it. but yeah, right. I, you know, and then if there's anything else that you want to share too, that has been on your heart that you've been thinking about, um, I haven't, sometimes I get a countdown on Instagram, but if Instagram goes and we get cut off, I'm telling people on Instagram this, then we'll, you can jump on Facebook and we'll finish up on Facebook. But so is there anything okay. else that's been laying on your heart you want to share? I think bringing it back to the, new book and awe, because this is something else that science has been showing, scientific research is showing that people who are experiencing awe are being impact, impacted in their mind, their body, and their emotions. That anxiety, stress are reduced Feelings of isolation are reduced as people experience awe. Awe also helps the immune system. It benefits the immune system. When we reduce stress and anxiety, we are going to increase our quality and quantity of sleep because they're totally related. The more stress, the less good, deep, long sleep. So this focus on awe and learning to live as a child would, a child is in awe of everything. I mean, everything is <gasps> like that. And we need to recapture <laughs> childlike wonder and allow that the impact of wonder to cause us to live in health and to feel fully alive. So yeah. my book is just an aid to awe. I love that. Is there, um, do you have the book with you right now? No, I'm waiting, you know, on the edge of <laughs> my seat for them. I asked them, you know, a couple of days ago, when do I get my copy? And they said, you know, we don't know for yeah. sure. I mean, the book is, officially released March 2nd. And one of the marketing people, she emailed, she said, oh, I'm holding your book and I love it. And it's so beautiful. And I thought, how come I don't have a copy? Uh, you know, you've got one and I wrote it. So, you know, a little jealousy there. But uh, anyway, yeah. it, it should be soon. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I mean, just from what I've seen, they did a great job and all the design and graphics and everything which yeah. helps the covers gorgeous. i love all your mm -hmm. covers though with winning the battle for the night also because i was mm -hmm. going to have you read one of your devotionals i don't know if that's on hand if that's hard to get i didn't 
uh, plan that at all. But I was like, oh, do you have any uh, devotional on hand or maybe memorized or anything? <laughs> no, I don't have it memorized. Uh, that would probably take me longer to round up than time that we have. So yeah, but next time. And then, you know, yeah. what, anticipation. Also, I'm sure yeah. um, you'll get probably get a sneak peek on Amazon, actually. Um, usually yes. they have the beginning of the book you can read. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited for the awe. And I feel like that also brings our focus away from, you know, COVID, the fear, the, oh my gosh. And um, this thing is so right. big and it brings us back to like God is bigger and he, like that allness, like you said, the, like, it's almost like, um, I don't like a perfect distraction. Like the kids, like, oh, like when a kid sees something like a toy, he or she loves yes. the, it's like, oh my gosh. And then everything else around them is like, it's gone. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, matter. Exactly. So I think that's a perfect yeah. time for and, you know, God has been challenging me. <clears throat> I mean, this is all fresh. This isn't in the devotional at all. But he said, you know, whenever you have a difficulty or a hard situation, he said, I want you to look for the wonder that I'm going to do in that situation so that you're always looking to be in awe. You're looking for a reason to be in awe, even in the hard place that mm. he will do. That's who he is. He's the God of wonders. And if he is, then I need to be pressing into that and say, okay, show me, show me your wonder in this situation to set myself up to be in awe. Yeah, I love that. Wow. I'm going to take that for myself. And you guys should too. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's fun too. When we, I love that. I love that. I have no response other than I love that. And I'm going to take that for myself. <laughs> That's good. That's, That's perfect hot for off everyone. the press. I love it. <laughs> Those are the best. Because they're, the mm -hmm. they're the right timing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I love exactly. that. Thing. Thank you, Faith. I'm really glad that you got to hang out. I got to hang out with you and you got to share all that you shared and um, just so mm -hmm. grateful for you. You said you've been an encourager for me. Um, such a, I'm a, such a fan of yours and you've encouraged me with my dreams, you know, my dream career stuff and all the words you've given to me. I, I like think about, you know, one of them particularly, I'm like, I need to steward that one. <laughs> I do a little bit, but um some mm -hmm. writing stuff but well um, remember so great he's got it god's got it. <laughs> that's true i love it oh uh, my mom says thank you faith and she says very informative <laughs> well thank you, mom. thank you thank you she says thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. well cool well i guess that's the show you know i think we ended on All a right. good no i'll right. put the, the the link, your websites. Um, okay, thank you. And I'll, I think I'll also put a link to how people can sign up for coaching with you um, specifically. Okay. Just, I feel like that is such a great thing that you do, incorporating um, breakthrough for people who want to be creative, be themselves in that mm -hmm. area. So, but, mm -hmm. um, but I just, you. I just want to bless you and I just speak over you like this. I see like, I hear like the word new life and I feel like, things are shifting for you in such a positive way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, it's almost like you've been waiting a long time for like the seeds and the grass to grow flowers. And I see mm -hmm. like flowers budding right now. And I see it's super luscious and green and in a place like right now that maybe, you know, doesn't seem like it would be shifting and changing, but it's, that is the seed for you. Like the lusciousness, the, the richness that God has for you. And I see like, a, a cool change for you happening your life is thank in, you in, yeah so. i receive it <laughs> good well cool amen well, <laughs> amen blessings <laughs> love give Corey my love too i will i'm sure he gets his love too he's watching i think he might be off now but all, all right. right well be blessed be happy be yeah. amazing as you are <laughs> okay you too
Bye. Bye. Are you waiting for me? Bye, everyone. Thanks for being on Coffee with